you became a world champion today without uh, giving up a single point throughout the whole tournament. Was that a factor at all? I mean, it looks like you got hit with a pretty good foot sweep and you figured out how to scramble out of it and not, and not you know, get scored on at all. Um, yeah, I don't um, go into a tournament with the goal of like, oh, I want this many points or I don't want to get scored on this much. Um, but when I started working with Valentin, he really sharpened up my defense a lot and we've been doing, you know, down blocks, reshots, all that stuff. So um, I've just seen some progression in my tournaments throughout the year and that's kind of been um, maybe the common occurrence and that's a good sign for me because, um, yeah, a couple times I did get in some almost tricky situations, but luckily with co coaching and a lot of drilling, I worked on those kind of reactions before the tournament. Oh, and you've mentioned Valentin before. How much credit does he get from this? And has he helped you more with your technical end or more of the emotional stuff, all the other stuff that goes into this? Um, I'll say, as a technical coach, um, he is <laughs> the greatest technical coach I've ever seen. I mean, he's just a genius the way he thinks. Um, he's not the kind of coach that you can just go up to a day and say, hey, show me a move. I mean, he has a philosophy and he has a system, and the way he shows you, you really have to trust him and believe in it, and you just start seeing results immediately. So yes, he's helped me extremely with my technique. Obviously, if you look from last year to this year, I'm hitting different moves. I mean, some moves I hit today, he showed me last week. Uh, and sometimes he'll tell me, you know, don't try and hit this yet, like drill it a little bit more. But that's how much confidence I have in his coaching ability. And emotionally, um, you know, I've gone, uh, I've lived at the training center at, or at university where you're part of a team I've never really had a personal coach here around. Um, so when I moved out to LA to work with Valentin, I did notice a difference because, you know, he's all for me. And um, I, that's very important uh, to have a good support system. So, and it just means a lot because, you know, I'm with Sunkist and he's a coach for Titan Mercury. And when we first started working together, there were questions, would I have to switch clubs or, you know, um, what, would it be possible for me to, for him to coach me through 2016? And we, you know, got Andy Barth who's head of Tate Mercury and Kim and Art Martori, who are the head of Sunkiss. And they were like, yeah, you know, this is okay. We're, we're, we both support you and we support your dream. And if Valentin's a key to getting that, then you know, you guys can stay with your clubs and still work together. So um, I just really want to thank them because without their support, it would have been a lot messier. Could you have imagined like smashing everybody how you did this weekend? And then just what's it like being in the zone like you were? Yeah, I definitely am. Um, I mean, obviously I want to wrestle the best of my ability and I hope that is smashing people, but again, that's not a goal when I go out. I just, exactly like you said, to, to get into the zone. For me, it's um, just praying and, you know, I just, if you listen to my playlist before I go out there, you laugh at the songs because they're really happy and like lighthearted or slow or just things that make me smile. And I thought about my family in the stands and um, just, you know, I just keep thinking back to all the people that helped me. Um, so many people who I can't even give credit, you know, I couldn't even give credit to a, you know, a huge long list. So um, when I just focus on the blessings, I just really frees me to go out there and just wrestle and do what I love and not feel pressure. So what's on the playlist? <laughs> it's a Christian song called My Lighthouse by Red Collective. Can that was a, do you, were you going to ask me to sing it? <laughs> sure. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Can you talk about the effect of that crowd tonight? Oh, the crowd was, the crowd was incredible. Um, it, I was like excited before every match because I knew that the crowd was going to be cheering. And um, just for them to be chanting USA, or I saw you know, a lot of our girls here with their faces painted, and um, I know, you know, every coach that I've ever had uh, since I started wrestling last seven is in the stands today. So to, I was just so, so excited. Like I just couldn't wait to walk through that tunnel and get out on the mat and just wrestle for them. And it, it's just been great to have it here in Las Vegas. Well, when you said this is the time you went for the first time you ever had a personal coach, were you in a drastic situation regarding your career? You needed somebody like that now, or this phone may not happen? No, I, first time I've had a personal coach year-round. Um, before 2012, I worked with Kevin Black, and he was incredible. Um, he really, just meeting him and his family, uh, they really took me under their wing. Like, I was, you know, their own child, and that was, just exactly what I needed, so important at the time. Um, and he invited me to move out to Wisconsin so I could train with him full time. And uh, I just thought that it was going to be best for me to go to Colorado and be in the training center and have all these resources. And, and I didn't realize how being on my own just wasn't 
ideal situation for me. So, you know, after in 2013, 2014, um, I just knew that I really needed to find someone that I could work with year round. And for me, moving to LA was the best. When did you start working with Valentine, and, and why that change? Uh, after World Championships, when I took the bronze medal last year, um, he came up to me and he said, you know, I've been watching you all summer, I see that you work hard, I see that you want to get better, but you just don't know how, and you, you know, don't have um, the resources. And he was like, look, we're going to go to Asetia, Russia, it's like, you know, one of the hotbeds for Russian wrestling, you can come with us, you know, I can't coach you, I'm here with Aaron Pico and Elena and Vicky, um, but you can come, you'll learn from the guys. And I was like, yeah, okay, sure. So I went for three weeks, and just being in the Russian system, um, you know, they don't do volunteer coaches, they do paid coaches, and athletes will stick with a coach, you know, for many, many years, and I realized, that's when I realized, like, wow, having a coach is really, really important, and um, Valentin and I just talked at the end of the trip, and he, you know, I just, I mean, he got nothing out of it from coaching me, because, like I said, I'm a suck kiss, you know, all of his athletes are tight mercury, he's tight mercury, but he just saw that I, you know, wanted to get better, and he believed in me, and he, offered to coach me and I'm just extremely indebted to him for that. Alan, talk, talk, you uh, and all the female world team members talk a lot about what you guys can do for women's wrestling in the United States. Two part question, talk about what this world title does to women's wrestling in the United States and then secondly, what an Olympic gold medal next year could do beyond that. Yeah, I, I definitely, um, it's, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, so in the United States, we have um, like seven out of 50 states with state sanctioned women's wrestling programs. So clearly, there's a dire need um, for there to be more support and more opportunities for the girls. And I think when we can have a world championship on U.S. soil, or when we can have it, you know, alongside the men and people that maybe came to watch, you know, Brett Metcalf today might see some of the women's matches, you know. I think it just really helps and grows support for women's wrestling. And um, I think there's so many girls that maybe don't make it to this level because they didn't have the opportunities um, when they were younger. They didn't have a club or a coach that believed in them. And lucky for me, I always ran into um, people that did. But I think uh, just getting world titles, and especially um, <coughs> titles, there's going to be more emphasis and more media attention for women's wrestling. And then I think that will kind of change um, many people's opinions about the sport, and it will just ultimately, um, you know, lead to progression. Uh, obviously, this is not an Olympic weight. Now you have to make the decision about going down. Which, which should we assume you're going to go down? And will this championship help make that decision easier now? Um, definitely. I, uh, you know, I, I got surgery in December, and um, I would, you know, I, I plan to make to go 53 this year, qualify the weight before the Olympics. You know, I thought this is how it's supposed to be done, so this is how I'm going to do it. And then I started working with a strength coach, started getting muscle, my weight got higher, so Valentin, you know, said try out um, the other Olympic weight, 58 kilograms. So the whole year just there were kind of some unforeseen factors and it just really, there was a lot of fluctuation. Um, so by, I mean, now I could have made 53, uh, you know, for the weigh-ins you know, two days ago with where my weight is, but where it was for the trials, I, it just wasn't, um, it was just going to be really, really taxing on my body, and I think one of the things that we see with cutting weight incorrectly is injuries, burnout, and I just didn't want any of that the year before the Olympics. Um, Valentin mentioned, he said, you know, this has been your weight class for a while, you've never won a world title, get the world title, you know, have the whole summer to really focus on wrestling, because it's also, you know, my first year working with him, so I didn't want to be killing myself doing extra, you know, running or conditioning workouts, I just really want to focus on wrestling. And I think it paid off because, like I said, uh, my wrestling's definitely changed. And I've leaned out, I've got stronger, I could focus on those things. And then now I just know what my body's capable of and what I'll need to do to get down to 53 years. You are, you are definitely going down. Yes. Helen, just to piggyback off that last question, I know you've taken your nutrition to the next level, your conditioning to the next level. You've got the mind of the champion and you're getting adjusted too. Can you just comment on how those affect your performance and your health? Definitely. I'm a big... Uh, I'm highly in favor of doing everything you can. You're, you're, you know, my body is my business. If I'm not healthy, I can't compete. If I can't compete, you know, then I'm kind of out of, out of work. And I love what I do, so I don't want to be out of work. Um, so, yeah, I think getting adjusted, you know, eating correctly, sleeping, um, just doing all those things, especially taking care of injuries or taking care of your body before it gets injured. And I think that's the biggest uh, factor. And that's something I've really focused on this year. And it's really paid off. I've been healthy and I feel great. Guys, uh, 
She's got to go get on the award stand and get her uniform. Okay. Hey, well, Congratulations. After, you get your gold. Yeah. after the gold, will you Woo. go back through the mix zone? Uh, after your gold? Yeah. yeah. So, guys.